day 16 of our Advent readings. Uh, first of all, I'm going to read uh, from the Bible, then I'm going to read from our book, Finding Hope Under Bethlehem Skies. But first of all, let's read from Ruth, chapter 3, verses 6 to 9. So that's Ruth, chapter 3, verses 6 to 9. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirit, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a Kingsman Redeemer. Bold I approach. Christmas cover-ups. One of the temptations that Christians can face at Christmas is to let the busyness of the season become an avoidance strategy for facing up to God ourselves. Even Christian busyness can become a way to cover ourselves. Perhaps because deep down, we're not really sure what God will make of us. The plan in action. Ruth keeps her promise to put Naomi's plan into action. She follows Naomi's directions to the letter and approaches the threshing floor where Boaz lay. As Christopher Ashe points out, there's a beautiful symbolism here. A threshing floor is the place where the wonderful potential of harvest begins to be realised as the grain is threshed out, turning piles of cut stalks into mounds of life-giving grain. It's a scene that's brimming with hope and anticipation. Manoeuvres in the dark. This is clearly a highly intimate moment, exactly like we saw yesterday the provocative verb to lie down is used three times. We can imagine Ruth tiptoeing over in the darkness of, as Boaz sleeps alone. In fact, it's so dark that Ruth and Boaz are simply described as the man and a woman. Quietly, Ruth uncovers Boaz's feet, presumably suggested by Naomi to gently wake him, just like when somebody removes your duvet. What will Boaz make of this woman at his side? Is she a threat? A setup? A prostitute? And so Boaz cries out, Who are you? But whilst Naomi had given Ruth fairly detailed instructions, she hadn't told Ruth how to identify herself. So what will Ruth say? Cover me. Re-read re Ruth's words again. I am your servant Ruth. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. This chapter began by showing us Naomi's faith, but now we see Ruth's too. Earlier in the book, Ruth had identified herself to Boaz as an unworthy foreigner, without the standing of one of your servants. But Boaz had helped her to understand that having turned and trusted in God's mercy, she is now under God's wings of refuge. As such, Ruth makes a remarkable request. Even to reveal her identity as an act of boldness that breaks with the shadowy incognito encounters of Boaz and Ruth's ancestors in Genesis chapters 19 and 38, but to boldly identify herself as Boaz's, and to ask him to cover her is something else. Grace-filled wings of refuge. Ruth's request is more than her simply asking Boaz to keep her warm. Corner is the same Hebrew word as wings and was often associated with marriage. Just as Boaz had affirmed Ruth for coming under God's grace-filled wings, Ruth is now urging Boaz to likewise cover her with his wings. In other words, dressed as a bride, Ruth has effectively proposed to Boaz. But it is crucial for us to see that Ruth's striking boldness 
doesn't lie in self-confidence. Instead, it comes from a confidence in God's character, emboldened in the kindness of Boaz himself. And so Ruth approached, Ruth's approach to Boaz gives us a glimpse of how we can relate to his greater descendant, Jesus. We can approach, approach Christ with a humble boldness, knowing he is entirely willing to cover us. To put it another way, healthy spiritual confidence lies not in ourselves, but in the character of God, who graciously invites us under his wings of refuge.